$500 for draw and instant games. The General Store on 24 in Lewis. All right, 843. It's Bill and Jessica show. We have Meredith Miller, Wicomico Board of Education Mental Health Coordinator in studio. We also have Jamie Riley, the Director of Wicomico Partnership Families and Children. Uh, again, welcome. Thank you guys for coming welcome. in. We appreciate yes. it. Uh, we have a couple of events that I want to promote again that you guys promoted a couple <laughs> minutes ago, but also uh, I kind of want to get into a little bit more of uh, mental health awareness. Um, you know, May, Children's Mental Health Awareness Month. Um, how big is mental health, you know, with kids in 2023? Uh, talk to us a little bit about, you know, Wicomico County. I know, Meredith, you're the mental health coordinator, um, you know, with the Board of Ed. Uh, you know, talk to us a little bit about, you know, your day and it, how important is mental health, you know, in, in the school system? So... I mean, just make sure you pull is, the mic right up there. You go. So mental health is extremely important in the school system. As I said before, I mean, we have 33 social workers, 61 counselors and student advisors, myself and another supervisor, as well as 10 school psychologists. Um, we have agencies that come in and provide services to probably about a thousand students and we are still drowning um, wow. with servicing mm. the amount of students that need mental health in our school system. What's like the biggest, you know, I don't want to say problem, but the biggest, you know, obstacle that you face with, you know, mental health and the kids and, you know, like a lot of what they're going through. A lot of anxiety, um, a lot of depression. Mm -hmm. um, social media is a huge factor that plays into that that mm -hmm. we see um you know a lot of things start on there that either starts at, you know outside of the school it filters into mm -hmm. the school mm -hmm. um bullying we see a lot of bullying this year has escalated um just kids aren't they're just not being nice to each other um which affects their mental health um you know it's just it's just been very challenging this this school year with the students and we just there's just not our county has a lot of resources. Everyone mm -hmm. keeps saying that we need more resources, we need more resources. We do, but it's not because we don't have resources in our community. It's just the need is so great that we can't meet all of the needs. The expectations, mm -hmm. right. Are you finding that, well, first off, what are the like the ages that, uh, you know, of the kids that are going through the most that you find? Um. It's normally adolescents, you know, that middle school age, but we yeah. are seeing a lot of um, preschool, even preschool. starting in pre-K really? kids this year, wow. mm -hmm. and our elementary kids, the numbers have been pretty high. Um, you know, high school is always, you know, it's higher to any, in the secondary level, but yes, mm -hmm. this year we have seen an influx in our pre-K numbers. Um, so and elementary young. kids. I mean, do they come down to you and, you know, uh, like, like, how does it work? Do they come down and say, I need to talk to somebody or is that something they get recommended for? Um, a lot of times it starts out as behavior. We see a lot of behavior issues and right. then they, you know, there are a lot of times they're sent to either the school social worker or the school counselors. Um, and then once they start talking to them, then they, you know, more of an assessment and then they determine that there's other things going on it could be you know trauma it could be things that are going on in the home with the family mm -hmm. um you know there's just a lot of different factors that play into a child's mental health i know i've heard many times people talk about mental health and they talk about the kids and families and you know there's some people who would say oh well it all starts at home it's the parents what would you say to that like is that do you agree with that or do you think that you know no it's not always you know the parents sometimes kids go, go through other things that bring them to this spot mm -hmm. that they're they're at right now like what would your you know response be to somebody who is you know just gung-ho like well the parents need to raise them better raise them right they're not getting you know it yes, all starts at we home know parents that all the time are like i've done everything i've tried everything like please help i'm yeah. asking for help what else can i do I mean, it, I mean, I, I don't agree with that. I already, Jessica just kind of like, you know, like th that's how, how I feel because there's sometimes when you get to a point where, you know, it's like the parents are like, I feel like I've done everything right. I, I, how did they get to this spot? I, I don't understand. You know, like talk to us a little bit about that. Well, and I think Jamie can answer some of that too because where she's, you know, with the Wakamiko partnership, yeah. um, she does a lot with 
some of the meetings and stuff that the parents are a part of, but it it's not mental health. I mean, there are things that happen to kids, you know, and that it's not necessarily a parent, but a parent plays a factor in a child getting better, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. It, it's a whole family support. So, yes, there's some issues with a student or, or a child, but it's going to take the whole family to ensure that the, the child gets help. Right. The parent is the one that's going to have to make sure the child's getting to these appointments, make sure that the child, if they need medication, that they are taking it, and they're taking mm-hmm. it every single day. Um, you know, making sure that they have all the supports that they need, that they are working with agencies, you know, that have been recommended to them. Um, you know, making sure that the teachers are, you know, doing what they need to do, and they're having communication. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's just an it takes a village when they say that yeah. you know it takes yeah. a village to raise if a they child really it really mean, does yes. take a village to raise a child at this point in time yeah jamie talk yeah talk to us so that if you don't mind a little bit about that yeah. with the families so um it's interesting because you know it does start at home we're with our kids you know more than anybody else mm-hmm. is but um you know there's genetic factors there's things that happen between kids on the school bus there's things that happen between kids outside in the yard playing um, after school mm-hmm. you know, there's things that happen that are beyond parents control mm-hmm. so maybe a grandparent died a close grandparent died during covid or um you know any other host of things even just the news right like our news is so full mm-hmm. of traumatic things lately all of that plays a part in our mental health so when we're talking about it being the parents you know there's just so much more to it than that it's so much bigger so what we try to focus on at Wicomico partnership is um, making sure that people know what is available to them to be able to help their Mm -hmm. kids so those parents that you mentioned that are like I've done it all I've done everything right um, you know we have resources that can be available for them one of the things that we do across the state um, is called local care team And what that does is it brings together all the child and family serving agencies um, and the parents. And we sit down and we talk about what's going on with their kid and we make a plan where we can all help Mm -hmm. to get that child better. So maybe it's wraparound services to do case management and help them to coordinate all of the appointments. Um, Maybe it's Maryland Coalition of Families to help be an advocate for the parents. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, whatever resources Mm -hmm. needed. Um, One of the things that we also did, we had talked about pre-K a little bit. Um, One of the things that we did was we provided a training with the Birth to Five program and home daycare providers, child care centers um, called Conscious Discipline, which teaches social emotional learning. So um, helping the teachers at that age start to help the kids be able to express what it is they're feeling. We have to remember they've only been on this planet for three, four, Mm -hmm. five years, you Mm -hmm. know, they don't know all the words they need to express how it is they're feeling. So that social emotional learning piece to help them be able to express those things. Do you guys, uh, and this might be a question for Meredith, but also, uh, you know, Jamie, do you guys work with a lot of teens? Um, you know, uh, my, my son just turned 18. Mm -hmm. My daughter just turned, uh, my one daughter just turned 20. And, you know, like, um, how is it with teens and COVID and being at home and, you know, like you seeing a lot of still uh, effects from, you know, COVID? In my world, we see teenagers probably more than anybody else. Okay. Um, I have an 18 year old and a 15 year old. Okay. So, um, you so know, you I live understand. It. You know. I live it. I do. <laughs> I'm so fortunate that my kids are fabulous and amazing and did well through COVID. Mm -hmm. Um, But that's not to say they weren't impacted by Mm -hmm. it, right? Right. Like deaths in our family and all of those things. Um, Local care team um, will take any age, but we do tend to get that 13, 14, 15, 16 age range more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. Um, We have a lot of the community resources that we provide. We have a workforce development program that tends to be geared more towards teenagers, getting people ready for life. Um, We have a 
youth drop-in center, Phoenix Youth Project. It's like the most amazing thing, um, but it's a homeless youth drop-in center for teenagers that are either homeless or at risk of homelessness where they can go and be accepted. Right. Um, no, get off the street a little bit and mm-hmm. get their clothes washed. Um, so, you know, we do have a lot that gears towards teenagers. I would let Meredith answer about the actual school. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, somebody... The teens, I know you talked about behavior, you know, a lot of times that's how you pick it out, you know, when somebody needs uh, to talk to somebody or you need to, you know, work with the child. But sometimes, especially when they get to that teenage, you know, years that they're just quiet and they, they're, they're afraid to come mm-hmm. to you. They don't want to come to you until, you know, it's like they, they, they don't know what to do. Um, you know, do you find that a lot? Um, sometimes, but a lot of our um secondary students so that would be our teens you know our middle school to high school they have learned to they've built good relationships with the school social workers and the school counselors in the school so they come down they do Mm -hmm. come down and see them when they feel like that they need to talk to somebody okay um and part of you know the good part about children's mental health awareness week is that the secondary schools usually during that week put on um events and they have tables set up at lunchtime to promote the week and then kids that makes them even more comfortable coming and talking to someone they'll do little they'll do different activities um, they'll have information set up they'll leave it up during the day um, a lot of times kids may not want to come down when there's a bunch of other students around they'll want to come down when no one's kind of looking around mm-hmm. um, so the social workers and school counselors will you know leave it up so kids can access that information um, they'll promote it on the morning announcements but you know, we've had, unfortunately, this school year, several different um, losses. I'm sure people have seen the news, um, mm-hmm. you know, that's affected a lot of our, our students and stuff like that. So we have deployed a lot of other social workers and counselors from other schools to assist these schools and students. And the kids do come down and seek out help um, if they need to. I mean, mm-hmm. even just to come down to have that safe space to feel like they can come down and talk to somebody and that someone cares. So, you know, I feel like our schools are doing a great job of erasing that stigma for our students. Um, you know, and they, they do thank you when they come and see Mm -hmm. you, you know, and they appreciate the help. Mm -hmm. So, and and you're okay. You you guys get a lot of parents calling saying, Hey, can you talk to my kid? Mm -hmm. Like like, they won't come down. I know, I know them. I know they're not going to walk down on their own. I just feel like, I don't know what to do. Can you please, you know, just keep an eye on them, talk to them, you know? Yes. And that's the thing is our, our social workers and counselors are for any student in the school system. It's Mm -hmm. not, um, you don't have to be a special education student. It, it, you don't have to, you know, be in a particular, you know, assigned to a social worker for any reason. Um, any general student in the school can come down and talk to a school social worker or a school counselor mm-hmm. um, if they need to at any point in time during the day. Wow. You guys are doing a lot of great things. Yeah. Wicomico County Schools. Again, Children's uh, Mental Health Awareness Month is coming up in May. Meredith Miller, Wicomico Board of Education. Uh, Jamie Riley, the director, Wicomico Partnership, Families and Children. Again, you got these events coming up kind of to kick it off the first annual Children's Mental Health Awareness uh, downtown family night Friday May the 5th 5 to 7 30 downtown Salisbury you also got the youth art competition the window competition uh, anything else you want to add before uh, you know we wrap up anything else uh, you know going on for uh, you know why Comico um, children's mental health awareness month so actually, yeah, we have um, one of the things that I do at Wicomico Partnership is um, we do a community needs assessment every three years. We ask the community to tell us what, what they, they think okay. the community needs. Okay. And that's how we determine what our priorities are. Um, so that is going to be starting in May as okay. well. So we'll be out in the community. We'll have surveys on social media. So, you know, follow us um, on social media and be a part of mm-hmm. that needs assessment. Mm-hmm. Tell us what you think your kids need. 
Well, yeah, a lot of crazy stuff on social media, you know, with kids. And I'm sure you deal with that. You guys both deal with that all the time, you know. So, well, look, uh, again, thank you guys for coming in. We really appreciate it. And, uh, you know, we'll definitely be promoting these and get them all up on our social media and all that. So, very good. It's uh, 858. It's a Bill and Jessica show. Go! Hey, Delmarva, are you looking for more reasons to download?